In this video, we'll be learning about sigmoid functions. So let's go ahead and write it out over here. Sigmoid function. Okay. Now, before we learn about sigmoid function, it's important to try to understand the problem, all right? So what is, is the problem that we are facing? Well, let's say that we have some data regarding the number of cups of coffee that you're going to be drinking, and the other one is, will you sleep? So, will sleep. And let me go ahead and also make sure that everything is in the correct order over here. I'll just call it cups with a lowercase. There we go. So if the user is drinking zero cups, yes, they will sleep. So that's the classification. Will sleep, one means that the person will sleep and zero means that the person will not sleep. So if I have some sort of uh, this kind of a classification, if you drink one cup, you will sleep, two cup, you will sleep, and so on. Maybe at four cups of coffee a day, you will start, well, not sleeping. That's a lot of coffee, and so on, all right? Now, if we want to plot this on a graph, how would we do that? In this case, the will sleep is the dependent variable, meaning, meaning this is the variable that we want to find out. So let me go ahead and use a different color for graph. So here's our graph. And on the x-axis, we will have the number of cups that the person is drinking. So I'll say cups. And on the y-axis is the thing that we are mostly interested to find out, which in this case will be uh, will sleep. Okay, number of cups pretty much goes all the way to probably nine. So eight is also zero, nine is also zero. Basically, if you're drinking zero, one, two, and three cups, you will sleep, but all the other ones, well, you're not gonna sleep. So let's go ahead and plot this out. Um, I'm gonna say zero cups is right over here at the origin, and then we have one cup we have two cups, we have three cups, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and so on. And for the will sleep, it will be zero and one because it's a classification. Either you are uh, sleeping or you're not sleeping. So since I mean, zero can be at the origin, but since we just want to look at it a little bit better, I'm just gonna put it a little bit above and one. Kind of hard to see over here, I guess, but uh, let me actually see if I can delete this part. There we go. Let's go back, let's say one over here, and we will call it will sleep. So this is will sleep, so I'll say will sleep. All right. Okay, so we already have the data, so let's go ahead and try to plot this data. So zero cups of coffee means the person will sleep. So we'll have one point over here. I'm using green color now. I don't know if you can see it, but we have a green color right there. Okay. One cup of coffee, the person will sleep. So right there. Two cup of coffee, the person will sleep. Three cup of coffee, person will sleep. So I'm just going through the data uh, on the left-hand side in the in the table, in the columns. So I'm just going through that. So this is all good, but as soon as we get to four cups of coffee, we start putting these things over here because the person will actually not sleep. All right? Now, these are two separate, I mean, zero is at the bottom, one is on the top, and you can see that you know, they are on different scales. Zero means that the person will not sleep. One means that the person will sleep. If we were to draw some sort of a line that goes through it, 
which hits most of these points, how will we do that? I mean, that's going to be definitely hard, right? I mean, if you're trying to create a line, uh, we'll try our best, but if you're trying to create a line, well, it's going to hit just one, right? Or if you try to create a line over here that passes through most of these things, now this doesn't really pass through anything, so it will be kind of hard to create those kind of lines that is passing through, well, most or hitting most of these points. So in those cases, this is where the sigmoid function comes into play. All right, so let me go ahead and first remove these lines that we just created. Let's remove that. There we go. So what is actually sigmoid function? All right, so sigmoid function, the good thing about sigmoid function is that it is always going to be returning you uh, numbers that are between zero and one. And the graph that you are going to be forming or the graph that it will form when you use sigmoid function will always be in kind of like a S, right? So if I have to graph this using sigmoid function, and we're going to see the function. So it will, it might look something like this. So sigmoid function is going to create kind of like a S and it's going to try its best to go through most of these lines. Now, with the data that we have, we are kind of lucky because this data is mostly saying that, you know, if a person have four cups of coffee or more, then they are not really going to sleep. So this is how it's plotted. But in real life, maybe we have data where, let me go ahead and say over here, maybe the person is drinking uh, six cup of coffee and the person is still, oops, uh, that's why I am really bad at these tools. <laughs> Let me go ahead and remove that. Here we go. Oh no, this is a really bad tool also. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, here we go. All right, so if a six and if I say one over here, then this point will not be there, right? Like this one. And our point will be somewhere on the six, it will be on one, right? So how will this curve now hit this point? Because, well, it needs to hit that point or it doesn't need to hit that point. So the whole job of the sigmoid function is to find out that how many points it can go through successfully. And if it's leaving behind one or two points, that's fine because it still was able to find the most efficient path. The formula for sigmoid function is S, this is called the sigmoid function, and one over one plus E to the power of x. All right, so this is the formula for the sigmoid function. And in this, E is a Euler's constant. So this, just like a pi, is E is a constant. And I believe, we're going to check the value. I believe the value is one something like this, 2.178. X is whatever our variable is, which are, which we are sending, which in this case will be the number of cups of coffee. And the result will be the y. So all of this is basically y. So you can represent this with a y, which is basically will sleep or not. So let's go ahead and see that if we put different values, what value we are going to get out uh, from the sigmoid function. And maybe we can even plot those values out. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually try to solve this sigmoid function uh, for cup of coffee when it is one. Like what will be the value when the cup of coffee is one, all right? So we'll say y, okay, I'll select the pen. Okay, there we go. So the formula is y over y, one plus e to the power of minus x. And the x over here will be our x-axis variable, the independent, so that will be our cups of coffee and if we and why will be the actual will the person be sleeping or not so over here we can say one plus e 
minus one. So we can, because X in this case is one cup of coffee. So we're gonna say minus one. E, Euler's constant, Euler's constants. So this is 2.718, just like, you know, there are different constants in the world. We have E as the Euler's constant, 2.718. So I'm gonna say one, just substitute the value, one plus two, 0.718 and it will be minus 1, right? Now, if it's minus 1, that means we can write it something like this, 1 plus 1 over 2.718. Now, you can divide this 1 over 2.718, so that will become 0 0.36. So y equals to 1 over 1 plus uh, 0 0.36 seven eight eight so that's going to be that and then finally add them together that will become one point something right so if you add them together let me just do it over here instead of creating a new line so that will become one point three six seven eight eight and if you divide one by one point three six seven eight eight then you will get 0 0.731. Now you can see that these values that the sigmoid function is gonna return, it will always be between zero and one, all right? So since 0 0.1 is greater than the half, meaning 0 0.5, we can just plot it, you know? So wherever you're plotting these values, you can go there and plot 0 0.731. So if we go back to our previous one, this, uh, I think it was this one, yeah. So if I want to plot 0 0.73, you can see that the 0 0.7 something will probably end up being, let's go over here. It will end up being somewhere, you know, somewhere over here where the cross is. All right, actually not here, but a little bit on the, on the other side, so let me, Go ahead, do that because it's for, for one cup of coffee, right? So one cup of coffee is right here. Oh no, see, I'm so bad at this. All right, there we go. All right, so one cup of coffee and zero point something, it will be kind of like over here. So one point will be plot over here, all right? And that's how you will plot different points when you are working with uh, sigmoid function. And once you plot all the points, um, you will see that which of these things are going through, like which of these lines that you're plotting or these things that you're plotting uh, are actually forming an S. And when you pass a line through the S, then you will find out that it kind of classifies the people who are going to be not drinking coffee like zero versus one. Now, how can we do that in our actual code? I mean, this is just, you know, this is a diagram or illustration, but how do we do this in our actual code? So let's go ahead and see how we can achieve that when we are actually using code itself. All right, so now let's go ahead and see that how we can use uh, our Jupyter Notebook to plot all of those things and even perform a prediction using scikit-learn, pandas, matplotlib, and all of those libraries. So in my Jupyter Notebook, I already have pandas, matplotlib, uh, scikit-learn, all of those things packages already added. So I can just get started with that. And I already have the CSV file with coffee versus sleep, which we're gonna see in two seconds. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import pandas as pd, and then we will import matplotlib.py plot as plt, and we'll say matplotlib inline because we want to show our diagrams or plots right inside the Jupyter Notebook. The next thing that we want to do is we want to load our data frame. We want to load our CSV file. And this is where pandas is really nice. Uh, we can go ahead and call pandas dot. And if you just press tab, you can see all of these different functions. 
and we will say coffee versus sleep dot csv and this is going to return us a uh, data frame now let's go ahead and print this data frame so you can see the file so this is the data that we're working with zero cups of coffee yes this person will sleep one cup of coffee this person will sleep now we can change this to what we had before meaning we can make our life a little bit easier all right and then we're just going to play around with it so i'm going to go into my sample project and this is my file right so i can change this just to show you and we keep, we will keep on changing it so that you will see that it becomes a little bit more easier so i'm going to start with everything after three everything is like zero so after once you have four cups of coffee you cannot really sleep at that point and don't worry we will play around with this a little bit more okay so now if i load my csv file you can see that it reflects that okay that's pretty good let's go ahead and plot it because it's it's one thing to look at the data in a data frame or in a table but it's a completely different thing if you look at it in a plot so we can go ahead and try to use the plt which is our matplotlib and we can use the scatter plot now what do we want to put on the x-axis well this will be the cups that you're drinking number of cups and on the y-axis will be the thing that we want to find out is whether the person will sleep or not uh, it's also a good idea to get give some labels like on the x label we can say cups number of cups i guess that will be a little bit even nicer number of cups and on the y label we will say will sleep will the person sleep or not so if we look at the plot you can see that the plot is what we also did in our rough diagram illustration and the plot is clearly telling us that if a person this is zero right so this means that the person is will sleep and this is if the person will uh, sorry zero means that the person will not sleep and one means that the person will sleep and you can see that all of these points are way before zero or uh, four which means that if a person is drinking zero cups of coffee one two or even three cups of coffee or even three and a half maybe then they will be able to sleep but anytime a person drinks more or four or more than four cups of coffee they're definitely not going to be sleeping all right so how can we find this out like if we want to use this data to find out or to create a model that will help us find out that if i put in uh, you know like eight cups of coffee or five cups of coffee will i sleep or not well this is where logistic regression comes into play so we're going to go ahead and say sklearn dot linear model import logistic regression okay we're going to import logistic regression from there and logistic regression or classification is basically the algorithm that can classify things classify things meaning it's going to assign some label to it that oh this is a cat this is a dog a person cannot sleep a person can sleep so that is known as a classification we're going to create the instance of logistic regression after we create the instance, we can go ahead and start training it. So the fit function over here is the one that trains. And for the x-axis, it does require you to send in the data frame. So this is how you kind of like create a data frame. If I don't use these double brackets, and if I simply go ahead and do it like this, uh, let me show you what it actually returns. So if I simply say like this, cups, right? And put it in a variable called foo, it doesn't matter. There we go and let's look at the foo you can see it's it's a cups is a the data type is integer 64 all right and i can probably see 
that the data type is series. But when you want to pass something to the model.fit function, you can, one of the things it actually can take is a data frame. So somehow we need to find out that how we can set in a data frame. So if I simply go ahead and do it like this, if I say cups, cups, which is the x-axis, um, and on the y-axis, which will be, will sleep, there we go. Then it's going to complain because it's going to say that we need to reshape it if your data has a single feature. Uh, so we need to pass in a data frame. And one of the ways that you can pass in a data frame is to just wrap it again with these block brackets. And now it's fine. And it's already trained, by the way. All right. And now we can go ahead and predict. So predict. And again, when you're predicting, if I simply go ahead and say, oh, six cups of coffee, um, it's going to tell me that, well, you need to pass in a two-dimensional array. Uh, so what we can do is we can just pass in a data frame. Right? So kind of like this, but wrapping it again. And zero. So zero basically means over here that the person will not sleep. If I'm only doing, uh, if I'm only drinking two cups of coffee, then you can see that yes, I will be able to sleep because it's pressing or it's passing one. Now, it would be a good idea to see that how that graph. Remember the graph that we were doing in our uh, illustration when I was drawing it. How that graph is going to be created? Because that graph, this graph is going to go something like this, right? When we apply the sigmoid function, it's going to try to pass through all of these different points. And it will stay between 0 and 1 because that's what the sigmoid function kind of returns. You can already see over here 0 and 1. But how will we create that particular graph? So let me copy this graph because that is in, that what we need again. But we also want to show the graph that how the sigmoid function is being applied and what kind of plot it's creating. So I'm going to say on the df, we're going to say cups. There we go. And on the y, we will use the prediction. So the prediction that is being returned from the sigmoid function. So I'm going to pass in over here df cups. And since we are calling the predict function, we need to pass in the data frame. So we did pass in data frame. And then that's pretty much it, right? Now we can go ahead and change the color and all that. Um, let me go ahead and see what's going on over here. I might be missing some stuff. There we go. And we'll say color uh, red. And there we go. You can see that, right? That's the same graph that I drew uh, when we were doing illustration. So you can see the sigmoid function when you're applying it. Uh, you're applying on different values, like maybe there's a value over here, one, one, and it's, it's, it's forming an S. So it's making sure it passes through the most number of points uh, for classification purposes. Now, if I go over here and change this a little bit, if I say that, well, if a person is drinking six cups of coffee and seven and eight cups of coffee, they're still, they're still sleeping. So if I go and run these all these cells again, you can see it's a little bit of a different graph because now we have these outliers because they are a little bit different. I mean, they are not the norm, right? So four uh, cups of five cups of coffee, this person is like, I guess it's not sleeping, right? So that's what we're say saying. Four and five is zero. And six, seven, and eight is sleeping it can sleep. So six, seven, and eight is on the top. So the more number of points that you're going to be passing in, the more, the much better, because that's how it can actually classify these different things. So looking at the top row over here, we can say that all of these belongs to one, which means that they are going to sleep. And all of these ones on the bottom, um, they will be not be able to see. So it's kind of like trained on more data for when people are able to sleep rather than when people are not able to sleep. So obviously we have only few rows, but 
if you have like a lot of rows, then this data will be obviously more accurate. All right. So that's how we will use logistic regression and we will use a sigmoid function. So sigmoid function is actually used behind the scene in the logistic regression algorithm already. And that is why you can see this kind of like a S shape graph. And that's the main reason. All right. So hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much. Let me know in the comments if you like this video or not. It's a little bit different. It's not on iOS development, uh, but it's on machine learning. So thank you.